Hello friends and welcome to another Duel Masters historical deck profile video. Uh, today I thought I would bring you something a little different to the kind of decks that we normally go over. So, you know, usually we're going over some uh, complex multi-sieve control type of decks, and every so often we'll look at some aggro deck that revolves around water and nature, possibly, probably, likely. Uh, but today I thought, you know, it might be interesting to cover something a little bit different. Um, you know, this was a successful deck uh, in its time, and I think it's one that, you know, is worth taking a look at, just because it caught my attention you know, as I was scrolling through the decks that to cover. Okay, so, start things off. Um, this deck was finished at 7th place at GenCon Indie, uh, Gen Con Indie, I assume that's like some sort of large uh, comic or TCG convention based in Indiana, that's my guess. As you can see here, it says 2005 or 05, and uh, the format, or at least the card pool, is up to DM06 Stompatrons, which is the set that brought us Bolmedius, Bazigazeal, Pyrofighter Magnus, etc. So, looking into the list, um, you will be able to tell, um, just by scrolling over some of the cards, it is a Mono Darkness deck, and we've got some blockers over here. Uh, our first blocker, Bloody Skeeto, he's just a, a favorite of mine, favorite of everyone's, he's pretty good. 2 mana 4k, stops the little creatures from rushing us down. Uh, but we also have a new face here in the form of Cursed Pincher. Uh, this is a card we don't see too often. Uh, the set he is from is from Stompatron, so he's actually from the latest set at the time. Uh, he's a blocker, and he's also a slayer, which means anything that battles with him will instantly die. Um, he's an interesting inclusion. Uh, 4 mana, 2k power. I think this is the lowest cost slayer blocker at the time. Uh, in subsequent sets, we do get Pierre Psycho Doll, who's 2 mana, 1k, and Giga Slug, who's 3 mana, 1k but they don't come out until the uh, multi sieve set, so that's uh, quite far down the line. We've also got two Dynalos, General of Fury, uh, four mana, 11k Demon Command. Uh, when he attacks, kill one of your guys, he use a double breaker. Uh, now, I'm willing to hazard a guess that the deck revolves around him. Uh, the goal is to just play Dynalos as early as you can, and you just keep swinging because he's kind of hard to get rid of in the early turns. Like, you know, let's be real here. On turn five, if your opponent doesn't hit Coral, he's not really going to have any answers for him until turn six unless you break into a shield trigger. Uh, so, yeah, in that regard, Dynalos can be pretty good. Naturally, his drawback is you got to kill one of your guys as he's attacking. And um, if you don't have anyone to sack, you either can't attack with him, or you're going to have to kill yourself. Two Grey Balloon, Shadow of Greed. So this is the last of our blockers. A 3 mana 3k blocker. Can't attack players, sadly, but he can at least attack creatures, unlike these two over here. Lazy butts. Um, we've also got 3 Horrid Worm. 3 mana 2k. When he attacks, your opponent discards a card from his hand. So that's pretty good. Um, I think Horrid Worm is a very, very annoying card to deal with, and I say that in a good way. Um, I feel like decks that aren't equipped to handle a, a Horrid Worm in the early turns, you know, are really going to struggle later into the matchup. I feel like a lot of the time when my opponent summons Horrid Worm and I'm not holding a Volcano Charger or something, it really strikes the fear of God into me. So, yeah, it can be highly disruptive and um, just super uh, we've got some more cards we don't see very often. We have two Junk Ads, Rabid Doll, two mana, two K Vanilla Creature, and we also have one Writhing Bone Ghoul, who is you know, pretty much the same thing. Uh, the races aren't particularly relevant. Now we've got four Marrow Ooze the Twister, on one mana, one K, when this creature attacks a player, destroy it after the attack. Uh, so basically what this reads is whenever this creature battles, it dies. Um, up until this point, there were no creatures with power of less than 1k, and creatures whose power is reduced to zero get destroyed, I believe. So, yeah, um, Maru Uzi's gonna be dying. Um, I think the main purpose of Maru Uzi in this deck is to be bait for Daedalus' effect, just because he's so cheap to play. As uh, now... While we are on the subject of Daedalus and Demon Commands and boss cards, let's take a look at another one, Photocide Lord of the Wastes, or I guess Pseudo-Boss I should say, since he cannot attack people. Uh, he can, however, attack untapped light creatures. 
Uh, I think Photoside is a pretty underrated card, uh, just because, you know, 5 mana and 9k is really nothing to scoff at. Uh, another way of looking at him is he's the darkness version of Ares. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think a lot of decks will opt to not include him, just because there are a lot of better things that you can put in. Uh, but when you're faced against a Photoside, it can actually be really annoying. Yes, he is susceptible to Coral. But he's not the easiest creature to get rid of, at least in terms of power, uh, because he's running over other boss monsters like Fighter Dual Fang, Crystal Lancer, Bomedius, Twin Cannon, who I'm sure would have been played in this format. And, you know, he can't be killed by Baz, so, you know, that's another plus. And that's actually another thing I wanted to say about Daedalus. Um, Daedalus has power 11k, so much like Photoside, your opponent's not going to be running over him with anything. Um, you're, they're really going to need some form of spot removal to get rid of him. I'm glad I brought up Daedalus again because Propeller Mutant actually synergizes quite well with him. Yes, Propeller Mutant. <laughs> yes, Propeller Mutant seems to be a card that's been coming up in these deck profiles quite a lot. Uh, his effect is when he is destroyed, your opponent discards a card at random from his hand. So as we've talked about, it's highly disruptive and allows for some good early game pressure. And the synergy with Daedalus exists in the form of um, you being able to sack Propeller Mutant using Daedalus' effect. And that way, you know, your opponent discards a card. Um, they don't even get the option to play around it because it just happens. Uh, I think that's a pretty cool combo that um, our friend Nathan Ferguson came up with. Last creature in the darkness section, I do believe, is Purple Piercer. Uh, cannot be attacked and cannot be blocked by light creatures. That's pretty handy. I think stats-wise and given the effects, that's actually pretty good. 3 mana, 2k. Uh, I think Purple Piercer, much like Photoside, is a great card for budget decks. Uh, just because I feel like budget decks can be overrun quite easily with light decks, just because of you know how powerful the creatures tend to be. Uh, so Purple Piercer is a nice uh, workaround for that strategy. Last of the creatures, we have two Chaos Worm. Uh, you know, uh, when he hits the field, it's basically Terra Pit, 5 mana, 5k. Uh, I, I think given the effect, the power mana uh, cost ratio is not too bad. Um, curiously enough, he's only supported by three Horde Worm, but I guess if the deck is revolving around Daedalus, I can't really fault Nathan for, for that card count. It is curious to me, though, how this is another example of a deck that plays a very thin evolution line, much like in the Double Geyser video. Now, moving on to the spells, we have three Critical Blade, uh, two mana, and it's a shield trigger. Kill one of your opponent's blockers. Well, I guess it makes sense to me. I mean, you want to keep swinging with Daedalus. It is kind of a waste to, to swing with Daedalus and uh, have it blocked because you you have to sack one of your creatures. Uh, he plays four Ghost Touch. I guess that's for the early game disruption, or just because it's a solid shield trigger to have around. Your opponent discards a card at random from his hand. And we've got three Terra Pits. Uh, shield trigger, destroy one of your opponent's creatures. Um, now, mathematically, I'm not too sure if there are any advantages to why you would only play three Terra Pits instead of four. I mean, he's only running a 41-card deck, so you know, I don't know why he just didn't chuck in the fourth one here. Uh, perhaps he was not able to procure his fourth copy of Terra Pit, but hmm, who knows. Moving into the stats, as you can see here, uh, super duper consistent, 100% darkness. Uh, as far as multi-sieve goes, I think dark is the best sieve to build a multi sieve sorry a mono sieve deck around uh behind water of course because you know water is the best um and distribution by cost i am also a big fan of this you can see there are a lot of you know cards that only cost two mana and three mana um, not too many mana expensive cards in the later sections uh you know the three six mana cards are you know the terror pits and a lot of the time i feel like you're not really going to be hard casting those because they're shield triggers which is which is nice uh and the five manas that would be well those would be your chaos worms and your photocide so, yeah, um, pretty cool deck, I would have to say. Uh, seems pretty rushy. Uh, some card choices I do agree with. I am a fan of the concept, but there are a couple of changes I would like to make if I were this person, and I'll go over them now. So the first one is Cursed Pincher. Uh, I'm, not too, I'm not a big fan of this guy, just because of his power. I think 2000 is a very relevant number, and it's also a very vulnerable number. A lot of the creature hate spells, especially at this stage in the game, are going to be targeting 
you know, 2000. Uh, you got Crimson Hammer, Phantom Dragon's Flame, Searing Wave, and even with the power of hindsight, as we see the, the power spike uh, happen, uh, you know, more cards are just going to be hitting this guy. Like a um, Blizzard of Spear still hits him. Uh, Mecha Dragon's Breath, if you if you count that. Oh, I also forgot to mention Burst Shot, which is one of the earliest destruction cards in Duel Masters. Uh, so not too sold on Cursed Pincher. Um, I think a lot of the time you're going to want to use him to trade with um, some of your opponent's stronger creatures, like the aforementioned boss cards, like Fighter Duel, Fang, Volmedius, etc., uh, not Crystal Dancer, sadly, because he cannot be blocked. But the thing is, um, you might as well just play a Bloody Skeeto, right? And sack it, or like, or block with, like, Bloody Skeeto or Marrow Ooze, and then just let Daedalus run it over, because, you know, 11k, I mean, there isn't really... A, there aren't really many creatures that are going to be able to stand up to that in terms of raw power. So I feel like it's better to just play a blocker that blocks and then use Daedalus to kill it. Um, any of these guys would be better in my opinion, like even more like Grey Balloons or something. Um, yeah. Photocide also um, will help run over things after um, you block an opponent's boss monster's attack. Now, the only reason I can think of for playing Cursed Pincher is as a counter to Bazigazeal Dragon. So basically when you play Cursed Pincher, your opponent can't really play Baz because you can threaten to block with Cursed Pincher and then they trade like an 8 mana card for a 4 mana card. Um, and that's just not a good trade off for them. The thing is, however, if your opponent is playing Baz, they are probably playing a control deck and they are probably going to be playing multiple copies of those destruction cards which target Cursed Pincher and those cards will also come out earlier in the game because they cost less than Baz. So I'm really not sold on this guy, I'm sorry. Um, what I would do is I would probably replace the Cursed Pincher for, you know, I don't know, another copy of Bloody Skeeto and two more copies of Grey Balloon. I mean, they both cost less, so why not? Uh, alternatively, maybe I could max out on Bloody Skeeto and put in two Dark Reversals. I did notice this deck does not have any creature retrieval, unfortunately, uh, and Dark Reversal can be quite handy if with... Um, with Daedalos, because you have so many cheap creatures, like you can just get back a Propeller Mutant, that's pretty disgusting. So you Dark Reversal Propeller Mutant, you sack it again, your opponent loses another card. I don't know, I think that's pretty good. And um, you know, you could always get back Marrow Ooze, super duper cheap, so why not? Some other changes I would make here are because I have OCD, I would either remove two copies of Junk as a Rabbit Doll in favor of a one Writhing Bone Ghoul. Or I would take out the Writhing Bone Ghoul for another Junkets Rabid Doll. As you can see, I am all about that consistency. Um, another thing, Horde Worm and Chaos Worm. Uh, I'm not a fan of this lineup. Um, maybe you could just replace the two Chaos Worms with Death Smoke, I guess. Um, I mean, Death Smoke is another form of blocker removal because I assume many blockers aren't going to be attacking, so they'll be left untapped. However, you will have the option to get rid of certain combo creatures from your opponents, so like coral for example or something that you think is going to evolve or you can just kill their boss monsters like if they have a bull medius like if they have i don't know what, what can attack untapped creatures maybe like gatling sky terror or um, valiant warrior exorius if that's even a thing i don't know um, but i think death smoke is pretty versatile you could even put another copy of critical blade or you know dark reversal i just don't think chaos room does enough for the deck or can do enough consistently for the deck to warrant its inclusion but that's just my opinion. Um, our friend Nathan over here came top 8 in a tournament, so what do I know? In terms of the spells, nothing grossly offensive. I think 4 Critical Blade will also be okay, but in some matchups it's a dead card, so I can see why he would only play 3. It's just it's important to be able to continually attack with Daedalos, uh, but if if you play Death Smoke, then I guess that problem is sort of alleviated. And I would just play a 4th Terra Pit. I mean, even if I didn't replace anything for it, I mean, we're going to play 42 cards. I'm pretty sure that increases the shield trigger percentage anyway, and yeah. So that was the deck profile. I think this is a pretty cool deck, a pretty fun deck. Um, now, it's not something that I think would really hold up in today's modern game, um, just because of how far it has evolved. You know, I say how far it has evolved, really, it was only played competitively for one or two more years after this. But people know much better now, so maybe the tricks won't be so effective. I do think it can be pretty good if you get a good start, your opponent gets a dead start, and you catch him off guard. But I think this is a more for fun deck, um, better for casuals. Um, I would say budget, but, you know, this guy is pretty beefy, uh, pretty expensive, so maybe not. But yeah, so um, if, if you're looking forward to looking at more unconventional decks, please do let me know. Uh, for the next videos, I 
plan to go back to what I usually cover, but your feedback is always much appreciated, as well as your viewership. So thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to bringing you the next historical deck profile, or whatever the next video may be. See you later.